This is Pratima from Planet Physiology. In this video, we shall study the molecular basis of muscle contraction. This topic will be dealt under the following headings. Introduction, Excitation Contraction Coupling, Process of Muscle Contraction, Role of ATP in Contraction Process and Changes in the Sarcomere during Contraction. As we have studied in previous section, skeletal muscles are voluntary muscles and hence they contract only in response to signals in motor nerve. We can compare them with automobile vehicle. As vehicle will move only when engine is turned on, skeletal muscles will contract when they receive impulses from the motor neurons. Even though engine is turned on, but still vehicle cannot run without fuel. Similarly, muscles also need fuel in the form of ATP. So, let us begin with the process of excitation contraction coupling. It is the process by which depolarization of muscle leads to its contraction and sarcotubular system plays important role in this process. Let us understand this process with the help of simple diagram and animation. Note here that this diagram as well as animation has copyright claim and hence do not reproduce it without permission and whenever you are reproducing it cite the copyright information. Shown in this diagram are deep invaginations of sarcolemma to form T tubules. Systems of sarcoplasmic reticulum store calcium ions. There are dihydropyridine receptors in T tubules which are voltage gated calcium channels. In case of skeletal muscles, these channels are mechanically or physically associated with another receptors in the cisterni called as rhinodin receptors. This circle represents neuromuscular junction. Impulses in motor nerve crosses neuromuscular junction and initiates action potential in the muscle fiber. This action potential spreads along the sarcolemma as well as deep within the T tubules. Depolarization of T tubules is sensed by dihydropyridine receptors, which in turn activates rhinodine receptors and causes release of calcium from cisterns into the sarcoplasm. These calcium ions combine with troponin C and initiate the process of muscle contraction. So, the events from depolarization of muscle fiber till the release of calcium into the sarcoplasm are included in excitation contraction coupling. Now, let us study the mechanism of muscle contraction. The theory of muscle contraction is put forth by A. F. Huxley and H. E. Huxley in 1954. This theory is called as sliding filament theory as during the process of contraction actin filaments slide over myosin filaments. It is also called as walk along theory because during the contraction process myosin cross bridges appear to walk along the actin filament. As this movement appears like ratchet, this theory is also called as ratchet theory. Let us quickly revise the molecules involved in contraction process. Already we have discussed these molecules in detail in the previous class on structure of skeletal muscle. If you have not seen this video, you can go through that video. The link for the same is provided in the description box below. The first important molecule which participates in the contraction process is myosin molecule. Heads of the myosin molecules protrude out from myosin filament with the help of arm and this structure is called as cross bridge. Cross bridge is flexible at two points, one where arm leaves the body and other where head attaches to the arm. Next molecule is actin. Each G actin protein in actin molecule has binding site for myosin head. The third one is tropomyosin. It covers all the active sites on the actin filament during the rest. Troponin is another molecule which helps to maintain relationship between actin and tropomyosin during resting condition. Also, it initiates the contraction process by uncovering the active sites on the actin molecule. ATP is the fuel necessary for contraction as well as relaxation of the muscle. And the last one is calcium ion. 
it is the link between excitation of the muscle and its contraction so let us study how these ions and molecules interact with each other to produce muscle contraction at rest when muscle does not receive any signal calcium concentration within the sarcoplasm is very low and hence all the actin active sites are covered by tropomyosin during resting condition all the myosin heads are in energized state it means atp molecule is attached to the myosin head and it is hydrolyzed to form adp and inorganic phosphate these end products are still associated with the head as this energy is not released from the head it is said to be in energized state so the energy which is associated with the head is in the form of potential energy in energized condition myosin head is perpendicular to the actin and it's ready to attach to the actin active site but cannot bind because active sites are covered by tropomyosin in response to impulses from motor nerve fiber there is release of calcium ions from cisternae these calcium ions immediately bind with troponin c this binding of calcium with troponin c causes tropomyosin to move into the groove between the actin and leads to exposure of active sites on the actin now as active sites are available myosin heads immediately bind with them in this animation for the sake of simplicity activity is shown only in the first pair of cross bridges but note that this will happen in all the myosin molecules so now because of presence of calcium active sites are exposed and myosin cross bridges are attached to the active sites on actin filament this actin myosin interaction sets the energy free and the products are released from myosin heads as a result myosin heads bend towards the center of sarcomere this bending of myosin head is called as power stroke this power stroke pulls actin along with them now new molecule of atp attaches to the myosin head causing them to detach from actin so i repeat for detachment of myosin heads from actin there is need for atp atp is activity in the myosin head will immediately hydrolyze this atp and this brings head back to original conformation where head is now perpendicular to the actin as active sites are still uncovered myosin head will now attach to the new active site further along the actin filament and this will be followed by power stroke all these events are repeated again and again till calcium ions are available in the sarcoplasm so let us see how these events come to end and muscle relaxes once the action potential is over calcium pumps will pump calcium ions back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum as no calcium concentration in the sarcoplasm is lower down there are no calcium available to attach to the troponin c as a result tropomyosin moves back to the original conformation and covers active site as a result acto myosin interaction will stop and muscle relaxes what are the changes taking place in the sarcomere during the process of contraction here is a sarcomere shown in relaxed state and its lower panel shows sarcomere in contracted state for the comparison so as you can note length of sarcomere reduces h zone disappears width of i band reduces but note that there is no change in the length of actin or myosin filament only the actin filaments overlap myosin filaments as well as over each other and this is the reason for decrease in the length of sarcomere now what is the role of atp during the contraction process first atp is necessary to provide power stroke which will pull actin filaments second it is necessary to release myosin heads from actin filament and it has got applied importance associated with it that we will see little later and third atps are necessary for pumping calcium back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum so that muscle will relax and hence 
contraction as well as relaxation of the muscle both are active processes so as we have seen atp is playing important role during the process of muscle contraction as well as relaxation there should be constant supply of atp the amount of stored atp will not be sufficient to maintain muscle contraction for even few seconds and therefore constant supply of atp is provided to the muscle by either anaerobic glycolysis or by oxidative phosphorylation of glucose or fatty acids now as we have seen atp are necessary for release of myosin heads from actin as well as for muscle relaxation lack of atp will keep muscles in sustained state of contraction this happens after death and this sustained state of contraction after death is known as rigor mortis where the rigor means sustained contraction of the muscle and mortis is for death similarly whenever there is excess of calcium ions in sarcoplasm that also can lead to sustained state of muscle contraction usually it can happen if muscle is stimulated successively by multiple stimuli and in this case the condition is called as tetanus rapid multiple successive stimuli cause release of calcium with every impulse and before calcium ions are pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum new impulse will cause further release of calcium and as a result the accumulation of calcium is responsible for sustained state of contraction so here is a quick summary about muscle contraction actin and myosin they act as contractile protein in the muscle whereas troponin and tropomyosin are regulatory proteins for the muscle skeletal muscle contraction will be initiated only in response to impulses in the motor neuron the theory for muscle contraction is called as sliding filament theory calcium ions act as link between the muscle excitation and its contraction atp is necessary for the process of contraction as well as relaxation and constant supply of atp is maintained either by aerobic or anaerobic processes that's all for this session thank you if you enjoy my sessions press the like button and share it with your friends if you haven't yet subscribed my channel press the subscribe button to get notifications about new releases press bell icon thank you for watching and see you in the next video